Welcome to Let's Talk Money. My name is Kelly Bolton and this is my co-host Harvey Cook. We're both Vice Presidents with Merrill Lynch. Building a business not only takes an entrepreneurial spirit, but it also requires a deep understanding of financial planning, employment relations, as well as the economy. With proper planning and commitment, you can build more than a business. You can build a success. We are very excited and honored to introduce our next guest. Not only is he a successful business owner and football coach, but he's an Academy Award winner and Arthur. Before we get started, let's take a look at the trailer for his award-winning award -winning film, Undefeated. Let's see here. Starting right guard shot, no longer in school. Starting with a linebacker shot, no longer in school. Two players fighting right in front of the coach. Starting center arrested. Most coaches, that would be pretty much a career's worth of crap to deal with. I think that sums up the last two weeks for me. For almost 14 years, we never won a football game. Oh my God in heaven. Chavis has serious anger issues. Stop. Stop. You go over there, Mike. Montreal is dealing with the death of his father. When he died, I knew I was on my own. Number 77, O.C. Brown. O.C.'s well, grades wasn't up like they supposed to be. He's going to lose an opportunity to go do something with his life. I want them to rise above that or say knock. Man, open, and he dropped it. The answer's about to fall to 0 1. Anybody can be a champ. It takes a man to stand up when this thing hits you in the mouth because it hurts. Everybody says when you get these inner city kids down, they'll lay over and you'll beat them by 40. Not us. You got to believe in yourselves, fellas. Four of those guys have taken some beating here. He has a Manassas player down. God, I hope we didn't just lose him. Two things mean most. The thing to him in the world is his father and football. And we got to make sure we're there for him. Money. Whatever you're going through, I promise it'll get better. This is an unbelievably good opportunity. You're down 20 nothing. You come back from that, now you're talking about something. 1-0-3 to go. Season comes to a close for somebody here tonight. You think football builds character. It does not. He's gonna throw it. He pulls it bigger. Football reveals character. This is it! Wow, pretty impressive. No, I don't know. Yeah, well, that's probably what makes you so great. You're humble. Tell me, what inspired this? Amazing for those people that haven't seen the film. Um, my business is a mile from Manassas, and when I started my company in 2001, um, it was close. Uh, when I first graduated from Ole Miss, I taught school and coached football for a living. That's what I did, and I never got away from it. I've coached for 20 years or so, and. The opportunity came up after um, after I started my business to go over and help out for a spring practice for a couple of weeks in 2003, and it turned into seven years. And some folks in Hollywood found out about the transformation of the program and the kids and all that was going on, and they came in and said, hey, we'd like to make a movie about it. And I said, okay. And they left, and of course we never thought we'd see them again. And then they came back and started filming with two handheld camcorders on a small budget. Made a film we thought we might see on a Wednesday at 3 in the morning on channel 422. <laughs> and uh, next thing you know, the Weinstein Company buys it, starts promoting it, and it wins an Academy Award. That is just amazing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. That is amazing. Yeah. Well, tell me about your background. I mean, you're, you've got a very impressive story, a successful business, um, Academy Award winner, an Arthur. What, I know you said you went to Ole Miss, coached football. I mean, was there anything that um, kind of was a turning point in your life when? when I, grew, I, was, I grew, I'm a native Memphian. Uh, my mom and father were divorced when I was four. Never had any relationship with my dad. Uh, other marriages and uh, just went to high school got a the whole reason I went to Ole Miss I got a scholarship and graduated from Ole Miss came back to Memphis and just started teaching and coaching and started having kids and needed to make a little more money and got out of the academia and into the to the private world you know it's um, very blessed it's kind uh, of a diverse uh, set of uh, 
set of skills that you have for sure. I just, you know, I majored in psychology and I guess my head was screwed up. I didn't have anything else to do <laughs> but just start going to work. I mean, I, I truly, I, you know, um, just been very, very blessed. That's wonderful. Bill, I, uh, I recently saw a, a beautiful picture of you and your family in the, one of the Memphis magazines. I think you were accepting an award at the uh, Entrepreneur Society. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is, what are some of the characteristics that, that you hope your children uh, could learn from you? Uh, perseverance, for sure. Um, hard work. Uh, Kimmons Wilson said that to be successful, you only have to work half the day. And I figured I'd sign up for that program until he finished and said it doesn't matter if it's the first 12 hours or the second 12 hours. <laughs> and, and, you know, that old-fashioned tenant that we seem to forget still holds true, but probably most is civility. Um, our schools don't teach it anymore. Um, I see a lot of parents and families that don't hold themselves or their children accountable to it anymore. And our politicians sure as hell don't hold themselves accountable to it anymore. And I think it's the biggest problem we have in our society. Uh, George Washington wrote the rules of civility. And he commented that it was those rules that he was most concerned about because with all the freedoms that this new innovative society was going to have and the freedoms to speak and the freedoms to think and the freedoms to act, that if we did not adhere to civility as these freedoms continue to grow and foster, that we would end up split. And imagine what he was saying back then and where we are today. Right. And I, I think we lose civility in our businesses. I think we lose civility in our, in our families. I know we have lost civility in our schools and our politics are the model of what a lack of civility looks like. The days of a Democrat like Tip O'Neill and a Republican like Ronald Reagan straightening out the four years of a Carter administration through working together and a Republican president raising taxes and a Democratic president working on entitlement and a Democratic leader working on entitlements because they were civil with one another. Unfortunately, I think those days are bygone and until we approach a new level of civility, we will, uh, I think we will continue to struggle. We're going we're to take a break in just a minute, but before we do, uh, for the people that haven't seen Undefeated, what, what is it that, that inspired that process for you? Well, the movie process or the football the process? The football process. You know, when we got there, their previous 10 years record was four wins and 95 losses. Wow. They had 17 wow. kids on a varsity football team, and these kids are surrounded by abject poverty and loss, and despite it, they came to practice every day wanting to get better. And uh, there was one father um, for 17 kids out of the whole deal, and I was... Uh, I was, um, I was impressed and most importantly motivated by their sense of perseverance and willingness to get better and it, it motivated me and inspired me to just stay for six years and try to do what we can do to help. That's right. very moving. Yeah. We're going to pause for just a short break. When we come back, we're going to continue talking about the skills needed to be successful in your career and life. So please don't go away. More than 20 years, we brought you quality programming. We're your hometown news and information station, Germantown Community Television. Our Access Together series puts you in touch with what's happening in Germantown with programs that both enlighten and entertain. For hometown hosts, a hometown attitude, and a genuine concern for you, our hometown viewers, stay tuned to Channel 17 each week and weekend for a new Access program. Produced in the nation's number one educational TV facility, the award-winning Access Together series. Only on the station that puts you first, Germantown Community Television. Well, you're wrong. I'm wrong? You're the one who misrepresented the facts. I misrepresent the facts. Are you kidding? Your proposal's ludicrous. My proposal ludicrous. will go exactly the way I say it will. my dead body. I think somebody needs a timeout. Oh, that's the power of one. Civility. Pass it on. Watching the award-winning GHS TV, Germantown Community Television, your hometown news and information station. 
Welcome back to Let's Talk Money. If you're just tuning in, I'm Kelly Bolton, and this is my co-host, Harvey Cook. We're Senior Vice Presidents with Merrill Lynch, and today we're discussing how to manage and grow a business in a competitive economy, and how to be an award-winning author and uh, uh, an Academy Award winner. Um, thank you. We were just before the break, uh, we were talking about kind of uh, the changes and the things that you see that need to happen. And it sounds like being a coach really kind of opened your eyes to a lot of things when you were coaching in Manassas and the difference you made. Have you ever thought about going back in and, and coaching at Manassas again? Probably not at Manassas. I've done that. But I, I, the whole reason I left Manassas was because my own children were getting older and it was time for me to spend time with them. And um, a few years from now when they're out of school and on into college, I'll certainly get back. The opportunities are available to me. I just, uh, it's not the right time for me right now, but in a few years I'll get back into it. I, I, I'm still coaching. Um, I coached at St. George's after I left Manassas for two years. We won a state championship. I've coached the last two years, my youngest son in junior high ball. And um, we just scrimmaged Germantown, by the way. And <laughs> I, will, uh, I will probably be back on a varsity sideline soon. Good. It's got to be something that's hard to get away from. It is. It's a passion. Yeah. 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 Bill, you've been a, a successful football coach, and, and you're running a successful business. Are there any parallels between the two? Uh, in terms of coaching and managing a business that, that you'd like to share with our listeners? Well, everything that makes a, a football team successful, everything that makes a business successful, everything that makes a family successful, everything that makes friendships su successful are um, distinctly similar. Um, and they are, it, it, those tenets and fundamentals uh, don't operate in a vacuum. They are spread across the spectrum of your entire whole life. Uh, they carry you in, in any endeavor, and those are integrity, character, commitment, um, grace, forgiveness, civility, um, all of those things that build friendships and families and football teams and businesses fit everywhere. The problem is too many times in our lives we're different on a football field than we are with our spouse, and we're different with our spouse than we are with our employees, and we're different with our employees than we are with our children. And as a result of that, people see right through you as fraudulent. Um, it's very important that, that you are who you are and you adhere to the fundamentals that carry you, whether you're with your spouse or your quarterback or your top salesperson or your 15-year-old. Um, and when, when you are seen and judged by all of those that surround you as authentic and real and you adhere to those fundamentals, uh, people tend to believe in that, follow that, and start to emulate that. Well, can you tell us a little bit about your business, what you do in business, and how did you get in that business? I was a, a salesperson for a lumber company. I was 32 years old and became the vice president of the company, and it was doing a whole bunch of sales. I, I was afraid that I would be a victim of nepotism. Uh, as the ownership's children were coming on, I wanted to buy a piece of the business. He wouldn't sell it to me, so I quit. I had a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a three-year-old, and a four-year-old. And your wife said, what have you done? And right? My wife did say, what have <laughs> I done? Both of our cars were, or one of my cars is a company car, so we were down to one car. And bought this little dilapidated, cheap piece of property in North Memphis and just started doing business. Um, but we did it right and we you know honest hard work integrity all the things we discussed and um, now it sits on 54 acres in Memphis the manufacturing facility does the domestic offices do too we've got about 120 employees I've got an office in Shanghai China one in Ho Chi Minh Vietnam and just opened one in Serbia Indonesia uh, we do about 40 million a year in sales and have just been extremely blessed it's pretty impressive Bill, uh, I, I know that you hire a lot of people. I, I was fortunate to have you give me a tour of your facility, which was mm -hmm. very impressive. Uh, can you talk to our audience, uh, especially the young people that are watching, and, and, and tell them what you think is important for them to know about getting ahead once they get a job in business? Well, first of all, when you graduate from school, whether it's high school or college, and you've spent all that hard work and time being instructed and learning and studying, it's very important that you understand as one of those graduates, you don't know anything. You know nothing. 
everything you've done is simply a milestone. Um, your practical knowledge and your understanding of how you're going to operate and how you're going to be successful is going to be learned on the job. And if you go into an environment thinking because you have some type of diploma or some type of education that means you are all of a sudden entitled to or deserve a position and a paycheck, um, the best thing for that company to do is dismiss you. However, if you go in humbly and understand that your education is just a milestone and you go in with your eyes wide open and you put all your preconceived notions aside and you go to work and you learn and you listen and keep your mouth shut and you put your, put your nose to the grindstone and pick up what's going on and just be part of the process and then find a place in it that you can be successful and be great at, that's how you'll be successful. Um, too many times I see these college grads come out and think, well, I've got a diploma now. I deserve a $75,000 a year job. Mm -hmm. um, we are guaranteed the pursuit of happiness, not happiness. And it's all about the pursuit. And because it's all about the pursuit, a degree is just a milestone in that pursuit. Also involved in that pursuit is hard work, intelligence, listening, effort, understanding, humility. And those are the people who end up being successful. It's uh, very, very true. Um, we have for years had internship uh, programs um, through Merrill Lynch, and it's amazing the difference in those that come with um, the open mind and the attitude that they were not entitled to this, but they were blessed to receive the opportunity to do the internship. And those that thought that their internship meant that they were going to manage money for wealthy individuals during their you know, two month tenure. Well, they're telling me we got to take a break, so we are going to take a quick break, and when we return, we're going to continue our discussion. Please stick around. You can now watch your favorite Germantown community television shows from anywhere in the world. GHS TV is streaming online, live 24 7. A viewing screen displays our channel just like you see on television. Simply visit our website at www.ghstv.org. So log on and enjoy hometown news from anywhere in the world, only at ghstv.org. I remember the moment clearly. I'll never forget that moment. As long as I live. I realized that moment. When we first saw the damage, these people really needed us. And I was going to make a difference right here in my community. Together with local responders, we cleared trees and collapsed walls. We had to get to the family trap beneath. As a citizen soldier, I made a difference. Be there for your community at NationalGuard.com. You're watching the award-winning GHS-TV. Germantown Community Television, your hometown news and information station. Thank you for joining Harvey and I on Let's Talk Money. Today we have the unique privilege to have with us Mr. Bill Courtney, owner of Classic America Hardwoods, with us. He's a story of success and professional dedication and truly inspiring. So please stay with us as we finish up this discussion. I wanted to talk to you about your book. We've talked about the Academy Award. We've talked about your successful business, um, but that wasn't enough for you. You wrote a book. Tell us about the book. Um, I'm writing. A oh, you're book. writing the book. Yeah, it has not uh, been. <laughs> much to my publisher's chagrin, it's not finished yet. But so some pressures. That's on. what it, that's yeah. what extensions are about. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's called Against the Grain, um, and it's 15 chapters, and each chapter is a is a tenant. And each chapter is explained in layman's terms, that tenant, and then explores the lives of three or four people interwoven in the body of each chapter um, whose life and walk and um, illustrates uh, that tenant. For instance, one chapter is, here you go, nobody else knows this yet. One chapter is civility. Sneak preview, Since we right? talked about civility, one chapter yes. is civility. The definition I put of civility is how we treat those we disagree with says more about us than our own opinions do. That's pretty, I like and that. And then the entire chapter goes more into depth about civility and what that means. And then 
there's illustrations of uh, three people that I have been mentored by or mentored, been managed by or managed, coached or been coached by, or just have walked a, a parallel life with, whose story I think illustrates best how that tenant can work positively in one's life. And then there's, there's each of those three people, one is a business relation, one is a social relation, and one is either a political or or public relation and then each chapter is just like that and um, it's meant to be entertaining some of the stories are fun some of the stories are heartbreaking and each of the chapters should leave you with a little bit of a takeaway of some things that might help you in your life I like that Bill uh, what what have you learned yourself uh, about writing this book uh, to be honest with you I, I I've shot a pilot for a TV show that I'm hosting. I speak all over the country, run a business, all of it. The most difficult and yet most satisfying, satisfying and rewarding experience so far has been this book. Yeah. Because all these things that bounce around inside our heads that make up who we are, we've never, unless you've written a book like this, you've never had to actually itemize them, put them on paper, put thought to them, and, and, and make them chronologically right for you. That's you know? so fascinating. But we are having a discussion right. about that today. Well, if about you did that with your life, imagine yeah. the depth and, and the reminiscence you would have of yeah. when you were a child and when you were in mm -hmm. college. And, and so it's required me to do that. And in doing that, it has given me some introspection on why I've made some of the decisions I've made, good and bad, why I've done some of the things I've done, good and bad. And it's been really... Um, a, a a a deep a, a deep exercise for me to to write this thing um, but without a doubt the most rewarding thing I've done to date Bill uh, you mentioned that that you do speaking all over the country uh, can you share with us uh, maybe a speech that you've made or one or two that have been Particularly, I'll tell you a funny story. Yeah, tell me some there stories. All right, I was going. I was in the. I was going to speak to the. I was in Colorado Springs, going to speak to the Olympic people before they went off to right. England. And I'm I'm coming down the escalator, and going to the venues. Three or four thousand people down there. And my wife has reminded me that she's not impressed by any of this stuff at all. That I'm still <laughs> just, still you know, a bill. dad, a husband, <laughs> yeah. and a guy who coaches football with the lumber business, and. Yeah. Uh, not take myself too seriously. So I'm kind of keeping it real and I'm, I'm going down this escalator and these two girls at the bottom of the escalator and you know, I'm, I'm fat and redheaded and <laughs> hot girls don't notice me much and they were hot. And so yeah. the one on the, the first one goes, oh look, look, there he is, there he is. And I was like, yeah, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And the other one said, "So do I, but I thought Chris Farley had died." No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so real for the you, whole huh? experience will also remind you that stay humble, you know. Yeah. And um, I've done do a lot take... of speeches all over yeah. the place to football teams. I've done some stuff for Pete Carroll with the Nike Win Forever stuff. I've done New England Patriots. Just got back from Louisiana Tech. PepsiCo. YooHoo. Um, defense Council. I mean, it's it's um, uh, Bear School of Banking, FedEx. It's just it's it's amazing. Well, you mentioned a pilot for a TV show. Is that the next thing? On we'll your, see on your list. So, can you tell us anything about it, no. or is it still hush hush? <laughs> it's well, I can tell you, I shot a pilot for a TV show I'm hosting, but I can't tell you much else. Well, I'm sure Harvey and I are quite an inspiration for a host of TV show. <laughs> it's not this pointers, kind of show. It's a different. But kind we don't of want show. you competing with us now. Yeah, no, it, it's not at all. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Bill. Um, we talked about uh, what uh, what employees can do once they get hired uh, to be successful. Uh, there's a lot of people in our society right now looking for jobs. And uh, do you have any thoughts, things that you could tell them that might help them get a job more successfully? Yeah, there's a difference in wanting a job and wanting to go to work. Everybody wants a job. Right. You've got to decide you want to go to work. I mean, they polled, the New York Times polled 20 of the most successful people in the United States who started with nothing. So th I, think I think their net worth was $10 million or greater to be part of the poll and have started with nothing. And they asked them to itemize the 20 most important traits that got them to their success. Well-financed, great education, surrounded by wonderful people. 
and the mean that they mean averaged them number one by 64 percent the number two response was 18 percent and down to half percent number one by over 60 percent was hard work people in this day and age have way too much entitlement way too much belief in in that everybody deserves mm -hmm. something which is the furthest thing from the truth there's a difference in wanting a job and wanting to go to work and if you can convince your employer you want to go to work you will be successful and you will find opportunities within any organization if you want a paycheck nobody needs you right that's interesting. Great well, we've got about 30 more seconds. Hope the students filming us have um, taken a, a close, uh, paid close attention really to what you said. Do you have anything else you want to tell us in these last few seconds before we wrap it up? I'm a, I'm a Memphis guy, and this whole thing is a Memphis story, and I'm quick to point that out everywhere I go. And we're, we're too hard on ourselves, and we beat ourselves up. This is a good place with a lot of good people. And if we will get our fundamentals right, we can be the most successful town in, in the country. And I say that all over the place, and I try to say it to everybody here who listen to me. We need to be proud of who we are and, and, and do it right. And um, we beat ourselves up too much. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. I wish we had a lot more time. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. But we'd like again to thank Mr. Bill Courtney for being with us today. If you have any questions about today's topic or any other money matter, you can mail us your questions at Let's Talk Money. That's care of GHS TV, 7653 Poplar Pike, Germantown, Tennessee, 38138. We may even read your letter on the air, or you can check out our website at ghstv.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We want to thank our guest, Bill Courtney, for being with us today, and I hope you've enjoyed this discussion on Let's Talk Money.